Here we're going to prove some algebraic properties of the wedge product of differential forms. But before we do that, I want to recall some stuff. So let's recall that an M form on TPRN is a function that is both multilinear and alternating. So we defined those notions in a previous video, so I'll let you guys check that out if you need to. And its inputs are m different vectors from tprn so in other words you're sticking m vectors into this and each vector is of size n and the output is just the real numbers okay great the next thing that we kind of waved our hands at before and proved in some special cases was that the space of m forms has a basis given by these following elementary m forms which are dx i1 wedge all the way up to dx i m where these i um, j's are strictly increasing and they're between one and n sometimes we use this thing called a multi-index to simplify the notation so if i equals i sub one all the way up to i sub m then we say that this dx i sub one wedge all the way up to dx i sub m is just dx subscript capital i Great, and then also I want to recall how exactly this elementary one form is defined in terms of what it is as a function, and it does the following. So if you have this dxi1 wedge all the way up to dxim, and you're putting these m different vectors from tprn inside, then what you get is the determinant of a certain m by m matrix. And that m by m matrix you get from taking these entries, the I1 entry all the way up to the IM entry from these vectors and then putting all that together into an M by M matrix. And that's what we see over here. So we have the determinant of the Jth vector and then the I Kth entry and then uh, J and K run from one to M. Okay, so let's say we've got two different vectors. So maybe V1 is equal to one, negative one, three, five. And then let's say that V upper two is equal to zero, one, negative one, four. And then let's say we have a two form. So maybe for the purposes of illustration, we'll do a couple, but let's say we have DX wedge DY. So that's one of these elementary two forms. And let's say that that acts on the vector V1, V2. So that's going to give us the determinant of a two by two matrix. And we get that two by two matrix by taking the first entry and the second entry from V1 that goes in our first row. So he'll, here we'll get one and negative one. So that's what we get from here and here. And then the first entry and the second entry of the second vector in the second row. So here we'll get zero one. So the determinant of this is like kind of obviously one. So let's maybe do another one. So let's say we have DZ wedge DW, where we take W to be the fourth um, component. And so let's say what we get, let's see what we get that when we uh, do this. So here we have V1 and V2. So that'll be the third and the fourth component from each of these vectors. So that's gonna be the determinant of three, five. So we took the third and the fourth component for this first vector and then negative one, four. And then again, we can just use the standard definition of the determinant. So we have 12 minus negative five. So that's going to be 17. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at one more maybe. Let's say we do dx wedge dz. So that'll be the first entry and the third entry from each of these vectors. So let's see what we get for that. So the first entry and the third entry, that's going to give us the determinant of one and three. And then the determinant here will be zero and negative one. Great. So the determinant of that is like negative one. That's pretty easy to see. So we get something like that. Now, the next thing that we can do is we know that all of our two forms on TPR4, which is where our setup is, are spanned by these elementary two forms. So there are four such elementary two forms. So we've only exhibited three of them. I'll let you think about what the other one is. But let's say that we have omega, which is equal to two dx wedge dy plus um, three dz wedge dw and then minus five dx wedge dz. 
And so that's going to be a linear combination of these three. So let's see what that does to these two vectors. So we'll have omega on v upper 1, v upper 2. So that's going to be 2, whatever we got from this first example, which was just the number 1, so times 1, plus 3 times 17, and then finally minus 5 uh, times 1, because that's what we get for this uh, dx wedge dz part. So let's see, when all is said... Okay, so let's see what we get. Here we get 51 plus 2 is 53 minus 5 is 48. So the final answer here is 48. Um, okay, great. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at some more uh, general things. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is talk about the dimension of the space of M forms on TPRN. And in fact, it's pretty easy to see that it is this binomial coefficient n choose m, which in other words is n factorial over m factorial n minus m factorial. Great, so maybe let's look at the proof of this. So we know we can take a basis um, given by forms of this type, these elementary m forms. In other words, here we have dxi1 wedge all the way up to dxim such that 1 is less than or equal to i1, which is less than i2, which is less than all the way up to i m, which is less than or equal to n. But now this is a straightforward counting argument. So essentially what we're trying to do is take the one forms, dx1, dx2, all the way up to dxn, pick m different one forms, and then put them together into an elementary m form. So in other words, we're choosing m elements from the set dx1 all the way up to dxn. But that's exactly how binomial coefficients are defined. And so there are exactly n choose m such ways to do this. And really, that's kind of the end of the proof. There isn't much to this, like I just said. Okay, for our example, we'll notice that there are six elementary two forms on TPR4. And why is that? Well, by this argument, we know that there's exactly a four choose two, but four choose two is four factorial over two factorial times two factorial, but that's 24 over four, which is six. Okay, good. And I said elementary two forms, those elementary two forms form the basis. So in other words, the space of two forms on TPR4 is six dimensional. Now let's see if we can list them. So we'll start off with all the ones starting with dx1. So that'll be dx1 wedge dx2, uh, dx1 wedge dx3, dx1 wedge dx4, and then all the ones starting with dx2. So we have dx2 wedge dx3, dx2 wedge dx4, and then finally dx3 wedge dx4. So that'll be all of the two forms on TPR4. I think that's a pretty good place to stop. In the next video, we'll prove some algebraic facts about this wedge product.